Suppose something happens and so you have to react. You don't have a system that you can only deviate from a system if you have a system. For sure. You can only make exceptions if you have a system in place. Otherwise, you cannot make an exception. If the exception is a rule, I don't think you have a profitable company. Welcome to Innovation Talks. Join us weekly as we discuss with distinguished industry guests how to refine and improve corporate innovation and new product development as businesses aim for long-term success. Hosted by Paul Heller, Sofian CTO. If you're looking for additional information around new product development or corporate innovation, sign up for Sofian's newsletter where we share news and industry best practices monthly. The fastest way to do this is to go to sofian.com that's S-O-P-H-E-O-N.com and click the sign up and stay informed box. Welcome back to our talk with Hoop Bruton. This is our fourth and final episode featuring our discussion around governance. In our prior three episodes, Hoop and I talked about innovation, beginning with artificial intelligence and machine learning. Then we discussed agile frameworks. And last episode, we talked in depth about smart product innovation. While our discussion today does not require it, if you have the time, I recommend you listen to the prior three episodes before this one. Hoop has been an engaging speaker and really knows his stuff. Now on to the show. Engineering can decide what the market wants. That is the big illusion. Engineers are not trained to understand other people. There's a... Remember, it reminds me of a, of a book I once read, I think written by somebody from Microsoft. It's been a while since I, I read the book, but I remember the title. The yeah. title was The Inmates Are Running the Asylum. And it was very much Microsoft's philosophy, things they were dealing with, with many of these things you're talking about here from a software standpoint. You just can't have engineers say, I can do this and I can't do that. And it just that's the decision and that's how it is. You can't, you can't be engineering driven like we used to be. I think this, what you said, the shift to market driven is, is, is real. That is, that, is, that is there also from a financial standpoint, of course, because you cannot make, yeah, if you want to be a profitable business, you have to make margins on your product. So there is, it, there is a ceiling to the cost. That is not new. It's not special. But, that, but you know, if the cost is low, we make a minimum viable product. What the hell is this? <laughs> so, no. Hoop, if you if you say if I if I hear you right, governance would would in, is encompasses quite a bit. It's the it's who does what, who makes decisions, how we make decisions, how we work, how we coordinate. What, how are, we, the, what it, are the data, also what are the data that we have for it? Things like that. Yeah. So that's if you don't have it, it would seem to me that that's number one. If you don't have that. If you don't have that right, if you don't have that really well thought through, you've got chaos, especially if you don't follow it. So what I hear you say is you're you're working on a system then. You you believe first of all, the governance, getting the governance correct is is fundamental. And then once you have that, a system, software system could help you follow. And, yeah. and you know it goes hand in it goes hand in hand. So yeah. so, mm -hmm. so in fact the, 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 the system is the face of the governance of the governance. That's a nice way to say it. Then you work within the governance. It helps you stay well, yeah, within, the you within the governance. You work within the governance. So yeah. Yeah, the software is the face of the governance. And if the people don't like the software, mostly they don't like the governance. Yeah, that's <laughs> that's very interesting. Yeah. yeah, we could talk about that a lot, also from a linguistic perspective, because as you know, companies have difficulty, software companies for sure, they have difficulty to get access to users. But I suppose once you have access to users and you interview them, then they are not users. They are interviewed users. And in, lang in linguistics, that is not acceptable as data. In linguistics, so when you do a linguistic search and you want to understand, get the language of people on, on tape or whatever, these people, if they are in an interview situation, they are not people, but interviewed people. You hear what I say? And because they are interviewed, it's not their normal behavior when they okay. And the interviewer is out of the door. It's called observed, observed behavior. Yeah, and yeah. The observed behavior is not the same as behavior. So many, many software companies make the mistake, you know, that when they, they want to interview users, if they get access to users in the first place, but suppose they get access to it, they interview them. Don't think that what the, what the interviewer tells you is that what you should do. The requirement that you hear from a user is not per se the requirement. Right, right. 
and, and as, from a scientific perspective. Huh? So in the science, that is a, a given thing. It's called the, the observer's paradox. And the observer's paradox is one of the things that makes it not so easy to understand who the user is, what the user is, what his fears are. So, and the user, for instance, can ask something from your software, which is absolutely in contrast with his position as a as a guy in the company. So they are they ask for fields, screens, certain data. What for them is ideal in a dream world, but in reality, they do not even have the power to do something with that data. So the reality, so to understand users, you also have to understand the political system of the company. And, and if you don't understand that, and then you have to, there are obser observation methodologies to understand then that within the political system, where you have your salary and everything, and the fears, and the, you know, managed in a certain way, and so on, and the culture. I interviewed once a gatekeeper, and he was, he was a sales guy, a, a commercial guy responsible for more than $100 million in America of a chemical company. And he said to me at a certain moment, Hupi said, if it was to me, 70 to 80% of the projects that we do, we should, I, I, I would s simply delete immediately. Say, hey, but you are a gatekeeper. You use a uh, uh, system of five gatekeepers and decide about it. Say, what is this? You are there. Why don't you stop them then? And then he said to me, Hupi, if I do that, I lose my job. <laughs> If I say no, if the CEO is the chairman of the thing, and if I am against certain things and say no, 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 they don't, they think he is not a, a team player. They think that I'm not a team player. And that's what I said. So you have a portfolio of projects that you in the end won't sell. Correct. So the political system and the culture defined his behavior. And that is true for everybody. That is, you cannot avoid that. So if you don't understand that, 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 hey, wait a minute. So we could create a Sophion, a very rational system, right? Give them all the data and the gatekeeper would be afraid to use them. What do you do with that, Hoop? What do you do with that? Yeah, so for that company, I did gatekeeping days training and I put the fear for decision-making, the fear for hard decision-making on the agenda as a subject. That's what I did. Yeah. So I, I, I made it transparent as one of the, and I, I, kept, I kept it anonymous. And at a certain moment in the afternoon, that guy took the floor and he said, who was talking about me? <laughs> Good. <laughs> like a therapy session, right? <laughs> so, 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 you know, if you, if you, the governance has to be, the governance has to fit the culture, of course, it has to fit the people, but they should. So when I write the governance charter, the CEO has to sign it because it is, across everything. He is the only one on the top that can sign it because it goes, the sales, sales is underneath, the CTO is underneath, CMO is underneath, all these people are, uh, 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 and they have to commit to it. Engineering, yeah. they have to commit to it. The plan yeah. guy. And, and if they don't sign it with him, then you don't have an agreed governance system. And if you don't have agreed governance system, you can give the budget to everybody, but, but you end up with nothing. Yeah. They will talk and fight and what have you and compete with each other and so on and so on. And that's not what you want. So and can you imagine that if you, if you don't have the governance in place, how can you be flexible? Suppose something happens and you have to react. You don't have a system that you can only deviate from a system if you have a system. For sure. You can only make exceptions if you have a system in place. Otherwise, you cannot make an exception. If the exception is a rule, I don't think you have a profitable company. So you see, well, what you, you see, so the, does it make sense? So it does. It so what does, I'm work, yeah. so what I'm working on is is to to create this let's say management system, software and 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 charter if you want to, to go to companies you know that uh, have hardware and software and uh, manufacturing and all that and I hope to help them to be to be to be organized and because of that be quick make make their targets and also be flexible. That's what I that is my. So despite discussion, so, so if a company has discussions about Agile, fine, have it, no problem. As long as we bring the new products to the market and work together. And don't, mm -hmm. I, I would say, don't try to force mechanical engineering in that same jacket. Don't try it. Let it work together. This is what I think, this is where I really don't like the safe approach, the marketing approach. I see it more as if they try to sell a Bible, you know? Uh, I, I, I really don't like the, that they create an illusion that 
that everything can be in that model. That that I think is an illusion. And 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 if companies believe that, you know, they will have big problems. I'm afraid. Well, Hoop, you've been uh, you've been very generous to share a tremendous amount of of really fantastic information. I can't thank you enough. I do hope you'll come back on the show again. I'd love to hear how that works out, what you're working on, and and maybe have you share some other insights in different areas from your research, from some of the European research you've done, and just you probably have a lot of great things to share. So, Hoob, you have a blog. You mentioned it. How do people find your blog? The address is, it is a, I started started it recently. So there is there are only five or six blogs on it now. But from now on, I will I will publish every week one. So at the end of the year, I hope to have like 50 of them. These are short story of one A4 page, a little bit more, not just a little bit more. And these are stories from my life in innovation management stories. And I, I hope they are a little bit pleasantry and educational. And you can find them on the following address, hooprutten.com. H U U B R U T T E N as one word dot com. And you can subscribe to it or you can write me something or uh, or whatever. And uh, so the, the, the blocks will will be very much on my experiences that I have in uh, innovation management and uh, since since years and going forward. So it's nice. Yeah, it's fantastic. Well, Hoop, any last minute comments for our listeners before we, we sign off? The last message for the listeners. <laughs> you don't have to have one. <laughs> yeah, if, if they are still there, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> so it's, 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 it's at the end, yeah. So if the, if the listeners can can listen to this and they would like to contact me, it's also fine. If they want to contact me and, and send me a reaction or disagreement or they want to talk to me or whatever, they would be very, very welcome. And my email address is uh, hoop.routen at sophion.com. It's very simple, hoop.routen at sophion.com. And hoop is H-U-U-B. It's, uh, in fact, comes from Hubert for the Americans. So, uh, so hoop.routen at sophion.com. Fantastic. You are very, very welcome to contact me. That's fantastic, Hoop. And also, they can contact us directly at the closing for the show notes, you'll hear ways to contact us. And I'm always interested to hear if you have new topics, suggestions for things to discuss, comments about the show, uh, anything at all, feel free to contact us as well. And you'll hear more about that as the show closes. So thank you, everybody. Thanks again, Hoob. And I wish you all a wonderful day. Bye okay. for now. Bye bye. Thanks for joining us this week for Innovation Talks with Paul Heller. For additional information on today's topic, check out sophion.com, S-O-P-H-E-O-N.com, where you will find plenty of innovation-centric content and corporate best practices. If you'd like to discuss anything with Paul or would like to get in touch with the show, email us at talks at sophion.com.